I know I can sell out 5,000, but I'm going to go do 3,000 because I know the 3,000 is going to sell out. So it's going to look good for me and the venue. Um, The 2,000 people that could have got in that can't going to yep. be anxious about and get into the next one and make sure they cap when the next ticket come around. And I also can still use this opportunity to build a good relationship with the venue and the people that work the venue and the, the promoters in the city and things like that. So when I come back around, my overall experience from promotion to performance is going to be even better because I already built the foundation to work to make sure the next one is great. Now, I got the headlines pretty quick. I could have played bigger venues than I was playing at the start of my career. But Howard said, no, you have to go out and play second on the bill to great artists like Leon Russell and Derek and the Dominoes in areas where you're not so popular. And you have to get the experience of playing to another audience that isn't your audience. Also, when you're in places like New York and Los Angeles and you can sell out big venues, we're gonna put you in smaller venues and create a ticket craziness. So you sell out straight away and no one can get a ticket. That means the next time you come around, you're gonna sell out a bigger venue. If you're good and you're building your career, just take it in stages. And then when you do play big venues, you will really relish it and you'll be ready for it. Playing somewhere like that and you're not ready is a disaster waiting to happen. I've been around for a long time, 50 years, and I can tell you, that's the truth. Just take it easy, know what you can do, and then build up to playing something special, but don't do it straight away. Obviously a lot of game in what he just said. Key term to me is just patience, mm -hmm. right? Like being willing to go the steps versus just hopping up to something that um, just because you can do it. Mm -hmm. Because you'd rather do it a lot of times than just do it once. Yeah, one big time. Yeah. One big time. Yeah. It sounds like whoever he was, was giving him that game was, seasoned um i don't know what those people are called but seasoned i guess talent development for tour yep. stuff even a lot of the advice right hey let's not make you the headliner let's put you second to some acts because you need to one get exposed to an audience that's not your audience and two you need to learn how to win over a crowd that isn't your crowd you know what i'm saying things that like you know that's like really good advice in the show world you know because yeah. to his point it's like hey i could feed my ego and go straight for my crowd and kill it but these skills I learned from putting myself in these positions are gonna, gonna make me a, a, a give me longevity because you know anybody can perform in a, in a crowd full of their own fans. Everybody can't perform in front of people that don't know them. You know what I'm saying any any artist now that does like showcases and things, you know you know how hard it is to perform in front of a room full of people that, that aren't there for you. you know what I'm saying Drake at Camp Vlog no. Great example, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a hard thing to do. So, but it's a skill set. Like if you are an artist that's Plan on being in this forever, you're always going to run into that wall, right? Like you're always going to hit the wall of like, hey, I'm performing for someone that doesn't know me. Because even like someone like, like we said, Drake, Drake hit it randomly going to Camp Flog. Now he didn't expect that. But then I even think about like every time my artist pops up, pops, the first thing they do is take them to like, Jay Leno or some night show. Yeah. And you think the people on Jay Leno are listening to Glorilla on a regular basis? No, she got to walk in this, this this building and win over this crowd of people that probably don't listen to her on a, on a regular basis. So even like, like the bigger you get or the longer you stay in this, you always going to hit a situation as an artist where you're performing for people that don't know who you are. You know yep. It's going to happen one way or another. So yep. I think it's a valuable skill set to learn. So. Yeah, man, he, he was spitting on this, man. The demand part, I think, is crazy, too, because it sounds like he's saying, like, hey, I know I can sell out 5,000, but let's go up probably more than that. Let's just, I feel like it's disrespectful numbers to him, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can sell out. I know I can sell out 5,000, but I'm going to go do 3,000 because I know the 3,000 is going to sell out, so it's going to look good for me and my um and the, the venue. Um, The 2,000 people that could have got in that can't, Gonna yep. be anxious about and get into the next one and make sure they cap when the next ticket come around. And I also can still use this opportunity to build a good relationship with the venue and the people that work the venue and the, the promoters in the city and things like that. So when I come back around, my overall experience from promotion to performance is gonna be even better because I already built the foundation to work to make sure the next one is great. So some artists and managers are just waiting for lucky moments when the ones who are killing it have systems to consistently take artists to another level over and over again. And if you wanna see what that looks like, we just did a collab where we not only show the system that we use that's resulted in billboard hits, some of the biggest viral moments on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, but also we got J.R. McKee to break down how he took an artist from zero to one of the biggest hit songs of 2022 and getting a Grammy in January of 2023. This is recent stuff, not old tactics. If you wanna check it out, go to www. 
www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Don't forget the www or it won't work because JR gets into the details of looking at the data, decisions that got made, how much content got created and how they adjusted the content over time for different parts of the campaign. This is real behind the curtains type of stuff. So again, go to www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Grammy. If you want to check this out and apply it to yourself, back to the video. Right. So now that 2,000 people that couldn't get in are going to be down to pay a higher ticket price because they couldn't get into the last one and the experience is better. Crazy. I think that's exactly it. Yeah. That's exactly it. Because a lot of people are prone to try to get as much money as they can in the short term. Mm -hmm. But leaving some money on the table leaving some of that brand equity, allowing that energy to build up mm -hmm. is a long-term play that starts to train your fan base on, hey man, when I come to town, it ain't nothing to play with. Yeah. Like people knew when Beyonce tickets went on, oh, these things about to go. Like one, they knew they were gonna be expensive and they knew that even though when they found out how expensive they were, they still knew that them things were gonna sell out. Yeah. You just know in your head and at some point, there might be moments where it's not necessarily true or selling as fast as you think, but the psychology is already built. Yeah. Right. So establishing that type of behavior that when I say that there's scarcity, there really is scarcity. Right. And now having people experience not being able to get in and even sharing those stories of people not being able to get in low key on the back end. That's yeah. what your PR team or your management team might be doing. Then puts out that word when I come to town. Get your shit together. Get your shit together. <laughs> Period. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So now nah, I love all of this. I love all of this. And it goes back to that conversation of people who do want to go the traditional route and go for the big dream and visibility that, hey, yeah, if you want to be that, you are going to have to be, um, be able to perform in front of different crowds. Yeah. And like you can't get stuck in this circle and cycle of just playing to the crowd that loves you. Yeah, man, because it's, it's dangerous. Cause like I said, it, it, it stunts your growth. And like, if you are growing as an artist, it's an, it's an unavoidable situation being in mm -hmm. front of people that don't know you. So it's, you know, why not try to learn the skill as, as fast as you can? Because it's the same muscle, man. Like trying to figure out how to win over a crowd of 10 people that didn't come to this showcase for you. It's the exact same muscle it takes to win over a crowd of 2,000 people when you open it up Facts. for a bigger artist in the future. You know what I'm saying? Like exact same muscle, bigger people. Yep. So. Yeah, I mean, and I think that's a that's a underrated like I don't know. I, I think performing skills in general are underrated. Like you know, we always talk about like music development and like overall talent development. I, I feel like in a in a in a different world, man. I should have been a, a performance talent developer, man, because I be seeing the holes in motherfuckers' performance <laughs> strategy, bro. Like, and I, and I was like, I could get you so right, bro. Like, <laughs> but you're not gonna pay me enough for it. But I could do it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But yeah, I would definitely put it on the list, bro. Like, like you said, like yo, like let's create long-term demand, which is a, a long-term play that you gotta believe in yourself for. Cause like you said, like if I feel like I ain't gonna be here next year, no, I'm capping right now. If I feel like I'm gonna be here in the next five years plus, then you're you're doing yourself a great service. You know, like you're really just helping future you be a lot better. And then, yeah, like we already said, like you can never go wrong with learning how to win over some strangers. You know, that's your whole, that's your whole job as an artist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs>